Okay. So, this morning we're going to start by closing our eyes. Everybody has to close their eyes and keep them closed. I'm, I'm watching you. Close your eyes. Everybody, and we're, we won't start until I have every eye closed. Now, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you were blind from birth. Imagine if you had no eyesight, nor any concept of eyesight. Now, we acknowledge that light exists. We're, we're going to be talking about light. Keep your eyes closed. I'm watching. There's points to be given. What would be the evidence that light existed if you had no eyesight? There would be no evidence. You, you wouldn't be aware that light existed. You might be able to see the results of light, but you, like plants growing upwards towards the sun or whatever. But you wouldn't have any evidence, strong evidence, because it would be beyond your experience. So this is, this is why I want you to keep your eyes closed, is I want you to imagine not having the experience of eyesight. You could not experiment with light because you don't have the ability to perceive it yourself. And without that knowledge that light existed, you wouldn't be searching for it. So, here, here's what it's like. Keep your eyes closed. Can you hear me? You can all hear me, but you can't see me. Keep your eyes closed. But you're experiencing something. What is it? But you don't know, you know, okay, I've taken off my shirt. <laughs> you don't really know what I'm doing. No, no, well, I'm back. If you rejected the evidence of light, then you might say that you had no way of knowing what I was doing. And that's true. Okay, you can open up your eyes now. Those of you who haven't fallen asleep, you can open up your eyes. <laughs> so, blindness, the Bible talks a lot about blindness and woe and sight and, uh, and our perception and shining light it's a theme throughout the whole of the uh, of, of scripture, and we're made aware of the fact that there is a spiritual realm that exists that we cannot see. We're we're ignorant of it, and it's interesting to me that that almost. Well, literally every culture in the world has a concept of the fact that there's this realm that exists apart from the physical realm, um, the spiritual realm. But because we can't see it, we're left really in ignorance about, about, about what it is, what it is like, what's it made up of, who lives there in that spiritual realm. 
And religion is very often connected to that spiritual realm, trying to understand it. But the fact that we don't see it, the fact that we don't uh, have the organs to see into the spiritual realm uh, means that we, we require revelation. We need somebody to tell us what's there. Scripture tells us, for instance, that there are angels. Uh, I've never seen one. But just because I'm blind to that spiritual realm does not mean that I disbelieve that there are angels in this room right now. We don't see them, and we don't know what they're doing. But we're told that that spiritual realm exists, coexists with the realm that we do have the organs to see. Now, you know, the subject of angels, we, we have all sorts of ideas in our head about, well, angels, they wear robes and they have wings and they play harps and they sit on clouds. Um, those are just tradition things. We, we, we have no idea what an angel would look like. Um, we don't have the experience. We don't have the eyes to see. There are also demons. And most cultures, most, most religions have that as well, an acknowledgement that there's an evil side. There's evil that exists in the spiritual realms. And we can't see them either. We simply do not have the ability to see the spiritual realms. And we are blind. And we're born blind. There is also this spiritual blindness. Um, it's not just about the, the spiritual realm. It's about our own spirituality that we all have spirits within us. We're, we're made up of that. It is a blindness that we have of the mind and the heart. And salvation is the result of God opening up our eyes so that we can see a reality that is not always evident. I want you to just think about the implications of that. When we sing, open the eyes of my heart, it, it is a cry that we want to see clearly what truth is. What, what is the reality of the world that we live in? What is my own personal reality? What do I hold to be true um, when things happen? What, what am I supposed to be... Um, believing about those things. So the Christian walk is really a, a journey from darkness that we're born into to light. And sometimes it's slow. And we do have a tendency to remain very uh, myopic. We can't see very well. So when Jesus starts to preach in his ministry, that is how he is described as he is the bringer of light. So he's just starting to preach in his ministry. Matthew 4.16 says, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Now, we sometimes attribute that to the birth of Christ and the light and, and so on. But it is, this passage is about Jesus is starting to preach. It is his word and his message that is bringing this light to us. And this theme is used so often in scripture. So John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, 
but will have the light of life. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So, so what is this? What is this light? Are, are we okay? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that would be great. I was not smart enough to think of that. <laughs> so, what is this light that is being referred to here? Um. It, it is it is Jesus. Jesus is depicted as being this light, this thing that opens up our eyes. Um, how does that work? Jesus considers himself in Scripture as the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And what light does is it illuminates what is already there. So there's this reality that we can't see. And uh, for people without eyes, they, they cannot see uh, about what reality is. They have, they have, they're addicted to understanding wood and, and air and those sorts of things that are physical. But there's this whole other reality and the light comes in, and we start to see things in a, in, a, in a different light, in a different way. We start to see things clearly, things like the meaning of life and, um, and the, the way the world really works. It illuminates the person of God, and when we start to acknowledge that there is a God, it changes the way we see the world, and it certainly changes the way we see ourselves. John 1, 18 says, No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. So we really start off with no idea about God. When we're born, we're told if you're brought up in a Christian uh, family and go to church, you're told about God. But if you're brought up in a Hindu family or a Muslim family, you're, you're told lots of different things and these ideas are formed. But we really start off with, with no idea about, about God. Even when we acknowledge that he might exist, we still need to be told. And unless we have God showing himself to us, we're really limited as to what we can know. Um, we have nature. We can look at nature and we can see uh, that it has characteristics and we can draw conclusions from them. So we can know a little bit. We can know for instance, that, that nature is so complex and beautiful that it, it's hard to believe that beauty exists like that and without the hand of God in it. It's one of the conclusions that you can come to. But most people look at nature and they don't see anything but cause and effect. They look at nature and uh, they either analyze it or worship nature. It's still, nature still shows us something about God, but it is not enough. Um, it is not enough revelation to, to show us who God is and our relationship with that. So God gives the law to Israel. That's, that's a revelation. He reveals himself. 
And the law shows certain things about God. It tells us how to act. It tells us who God is and what kind of things are important to God and what morality is and, and the characteristic, all these characteristics of God. We can see all sorts of things in the law. God speaks through all of scripture. And this is a, an act of revelation, God revealing himself. But it is not enough, again. The great plan of salvation is not really clear in, in the Old Testament. Israel only had a dim view of God. And those outside Israel had no chance of knowing God. They were left in the dark. So God reveals himself in Jesus. And I just think that's amazing. That claim that God reveals himself in Jesus. Finally, the light comes to the earth. The people who are writing the, the New Testament, who have, the, the apostles, the people who are teaching, they understand that Jesus is the way we see God, the lens through which we see God. Finally, the light comes to earth. But the nature of blindness is that it cannot see light even when it exists. The light comes in, but if we don't have the organs, the eyes to see it, we're still blind. And so that light of Jesus is still, it's still unseen. We have the nature, we have the law, we have Jesus, but the world is still blind. Second Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Sight is so important to, to live out a life of following God and we, we have to come to grips with the fact that we rely on God to show us even as we read scripture, we, we rely on God to, to take what we read and apply it to ourselves, um, to, we rely on God to just show himself in everyday life what is true about, about this situation that we're going through or, or what are the deep truths of God. Without the nudging of the spirit, we still have a difficult time seeing. As a matter of fact, I would, I would say this, it's, it's, it's confusing Life is confusing when we live in the dark. We need God to do the miracle of showing himself to us. And when, we, when we're not aware of the spiritual aspect of our life, or we don't understand it, um, th then we respond to all the wrong things. I'm gonna give you some examples here. This is the story in the Old Testament of the uh, Arameans who are attacking Israel in the city of Dotham. And the, a huge army comes and surrounds the, this town of Dotham. And um, so 2 Kings 6, 15 to 17. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. 
Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are against, uh, who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open the eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then he opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Can you imagine? the abject fear of being surrounded and knowing that there's no possible way that we're going to die because that's just the reality. And then opening your eyes and seeing that there's this whole other reality there. There's no reason to fear. There's a whole universe in which God has complete control and we need to see that and believe that it is true even when we don't see the evidence for it even when things are in chaos and they hurt so badly even when the car engine blows up and we don't know what to do even when disaster is happening, even when things happen that most people would say, there, there can't be a God. Look what he has allowed to happen. And yet this universe, every atom is controlled by a God and that God loves us. Easter is coming up. Think about what the disciples experienced on that weekend after the Lord, the, the uh, supper in the upper room. Everything came crashing down. You know, the Garden of Eden, the soldiers come. They take him away. They see him beaten. They see him hung up on a cross. They watch as he dies. This is the person that they had put all their hope into, all their understanding of who they were, what they were about, is hanging on the cross and dies in front of them. Satan seems to be in control. All their expectations were, were dashed. And yet the whole scene, everything about that was God-directed. So, weeks later, Peter is talking to these people who are, are listening to him. And he says, you know, yeah, you did that. You're responsible. But all this was done for salvation's sake. Salvation couldn't come to you unless Jesus died for your sins. So at the very moment when, when these disciples were probably just giving up, they're watching their salvation and the meaning of their life blossom into existence. Another example is Paul. Paul is writing and he's talking about his afflictions. And he, he says this, a messenger from Satan is afflicting him. And he reasonably, reasonably asks God, take it away. He asks three times, take it away. I don't want this. This is, this is, this is, it can't be your will that I would be attacked by Satan on a regular basis. It can't be your will. And he gets word from God, yes it is. I'm allowing this to happen to you. There's a reason for it being there. But we're blind until we're told. We're blind until we can see. We're blind until we acknowledge this spiritual reality that we live in. 
Another example, Peter is asked by Jesus, who do you think I am? Um, so Matthew 16, 15 to 17. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replies, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this has, was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. So Jesus is saying, you know, it was God that opened your eyes to who I am. This doesn't come because you thought it through or were told. This, the clarity of this was given to you by my Father in heaven. Each of these scenarios requires God to pull back the veil so that we can see, to get rid of our blindness. And we're simply not able to discern ourselves, uh, 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 these things, truth, on our own. There's lots of people that try, um, and they come up with all kinds of things. People are still searching and groping and trying to come up with a, a reason for living and, and the way things work and things that will help them out. But we're told to ask for God for some insight. We're told to ask God to reveal himself to us. Um, next week we're going to be talking about God shining through us when we have the light and we can see there's expectations that are placed on us. We are taught by God to see his hand and his character, the way he does things, his absolute control over each situation. And as we come to see that, may we find some peace and assurance knowing that God loves us and God sees clearly. One day we are going to be able to see God clearly. We're going to look him in the face and all our questions are going to be answered and there will be no more darkness. And man, I long for that because there's, my eyesight isn't great, especially I'm a little dizzy. Um, there's, there has to be clarity. There has to be clarity as we live out our lives and it has to center on who Jesus is. Dear Heavenly Father, may you give us that clarity May you shine the light around us and, and, and give us eyes that we can see what is true. Take away the confusion and the stumbling. Make our path clear to us. Lord, we need these things. We trust in you. And even when it's dark, even when we can't see the way forward, we need to trust that you are going to just give us the light that we need. Lord, help us to walk with that assurance, knowing that you have a heart that chases after us and loves us and is willing and longs to give us sight to see. Lord, we just ask that you help us in that. And I pray that in the holy and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.